Hello, everyone. Um, I hope everyone is nice and safe, uh, staying healthy. Today I'm just gonna do some basic uh, floor exercises from the Graham Technique. I'm gonna talk through it, um, and hopefully we'll get through a little bit more today than we usually do. So, without further ado, we're just gonna start with the soles of our feet together, and we're gonna do the bounces. So you're just gonna follow along. I'm not gonna be going very quickly, but this way we can get through more of the floor um, together. So what I really want you to think of is that your sits bones are drilling holes into the floor. The back of your spine is going through the crown of your head, straight up into the ceiling. And as we're doing that, we're gonna engage our lower abs, really trying to create this massive circular energy here, and we're gonna bounce forward, bringing the crown of our head, head to the soles of our feet. Here we go, eight bounces. One, and two, and three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Really keep those abs engaged as you release in your pelvis into a flat back, we're not overextending, we're not underextending. We really want this as flat as possible. Don't go so far forward that your sits bones are off the floor. They should be still drilled straight into the floor. And we're gonna come back up. We're gonna double pay our arms out front with our legs and open to a nice demi-second, not too wide. And we're gonna contract again and make a nice rainbow up and over and bounce. One. And two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Make sure your elbows aren't up here. They should be directly off of the line of your shoulders. And we're gonna release through the pelvis, through the back, through the neck and spine, straight back, coming up. We're gonna bring our arms and legs directly in front of us, flex our feet, and we're gonna contract and go over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Release through your tailbone. Point your toes all nice and slow. Coming up. We're going to turn out our legs and bring our arms to dummy second. Cross our left ankle over our right ankle and we're going to exhale and just do some breathings on two. So inhale. In. Really breathe with this. Don't pretend. The movement should be informed by the inhalation. And exhale. Very nice, just a very quick warm up. Got some people coming in, great, hello, welcome. We're just breathing, continue to breathe. Um, it's very, very important. Okay, so we're gonna stay in this um, position with our ankles crossed, keeping our shoulders over the hips. You're gonna hear me say that probably a lot. Um, as a ballet dancer, I was always taught to you know, chest up, chest forward, up and out, which isn't quite what ballet dancers want to do, but it was something that I was told. And so I end up going forward here. What Graham really helps or helped me with in my ballet technique was to really keep my center axis nice and aligned. It makes it so that you're much more, um, your, your abs are a lot more accessible when you're farther back. It means that you're not putting strain on your um, erector spinae muscle group. And so it's really, really going to support your spine. It's going to make it so that you can dance longer and stay healthy. Okay, so we're going to start with our spirals. Ankles crossed, hands directly out. Feel like you're shooting lasers into the ground diagonally towards the ground. So you don't want to droop your fingers. You don't want it to be hyperextended. Um, as Sophie Ansel would say, we're not getting a blood transfusion. 
Just straighten the arms, but no hyperextension. And we're gonna exhale into a contraction, just the lower part of the spine. My shoulders are not coming forward, they're not coming up, they're just remaining on my back. You wanna make sure your lats are still engaged. Your gaze is gonna softly go forward, and we're gonna rotate first in your right hip, is gonna pull back, and as you do that, you're gonna notice your spine's gonna to wanna to follow. You're gonna let it do that. So you're gonna spiral two and three, looking directly over your shoulder and your knee. Come back to center, two, and exhale. And other side, first thing that moves is your pelvis. One, two, and three, and center to contract. One more time, each side. Two, three, no eplama yet, just directly side, and exhale, and one, two, three, center. And we're gonna go a little bit faster now. So get there in one count. Now you're gonna do a nice spiral up and a high release as high as you can, but that wasn't as high as you could go. So you want to even higher, and then one more time you're going to go even higher. And then you're going to bring your shoulders and your hips back to center and notice you're in a beautiful high release. Come back to center and exhale, contract. Other side, one. High release, spiral. High release, spiral. We're going to do one more just to make it even. Bring everything back to center. Up and exhale. We're going to do that one more time. And one. High release. High release. And center. Two. Exhale. And one. High release. Spiral. High release. Spiral and center. Two. And exhale. Good. So something to think about when you're spiraling. Spir our gram technique is based off of contractions, release, spirals, and transferring the weight, which you could say is the same for a ballet as well. Um, but specifically for the gram technique, spirals happen uh, very much along the spine at the beginning of class. You don't start adding tilts and aplomb to the head until much later. So when I'm saying to spiral, I really am just meaning just turning this way. I'm not bending, I'm not inclining my head. You wanna keep your spine as straight up as possible. Now when we're doing a high release, it's that same idea. That's why you're lifting up so, so much. You don't want any curve in the spine. You still want it to be straight up and down. And then you're gonna come center. So there's, it's not undulating, it's all just around the spine. And so what you'll notice is when you're doing a spiral properly, your uh, one shoulder is gonna go forward evenly with this shoulder that's gonna go back. So we're not going forward over our leg, we're not going back away from our leg. It's, and it sounds, it's very simple and it sounds silly to say this, but you're really just staying directly over your hips. And that'll help a lot with, especially what we're about to do. We're gonna do our open leg fronts. So we started in the same spot that we just finished, our last spiral. So we're in a contraction and our hands are nice and long. Our gaze is soft forward. Our uh, abs are engaged. We're not tucking, we're not back on our sacrum. We're truly just on our sits bones. If you're back on your sacrum, you're too far back. You're not tucking, you just want it to be nice and long through the back of the spine. So the first thing we're gonna do, bring your hip back, you're gonna spiral your shoulders and your neck and extend up to the ceiling and you're gonna bring your knee and your leg up and open, like a bow and arrow. And we're gonna come back to center and up 
and pitch forward. Again, this isn't too far forward. You want to try to keep your sits bones on the ground. We're going to step through. One, and two, and three. Press the hips. One, two, three. Get a nice stretch in there. Contract by pulling away from the ceiling. And then push that elbow back and pitch forward. We're going to do this again with one more addition. One, and two, and three. We're going to port a bra and flex our foot and look at our upper elbow. And we're going to come back nicely spiraled, coming back to center, arm up and forward. Step through, two, three, hips press, two, three, contract away from the ceiling, three, elbow back in one count, and center. We're going to do the transition, which first thing that's going to happen, you're going to contract in your pelvis. So that's one, bring your arms up to a high fifth as you extend your legs out, still in a contracted position, I'll do this from the side, and open. So you're in a nice hollowed, scooped out position. Your arms are up in front of your chest. They're not dropping down here. Ooh, that's a nice workout. And we're gonna do a high release. Swing the arms up and through and over to the other side. You should have switched your legs. Okay? So now we can do the other side. Left hip back, left shoulder back. Open the legs and arms and cross and up, pitch forward. Step on this foot, get nice and flat. Bring this hip on top of the other hip, press it up and through. Contract away from the ceiling, elbow back and pitch forward. And one, legs and arms and open. We're gonna flex and bend towards our leg. Make sure this knee is moving in op opposition towards the back. And we're gonna come up and we're gonna cross. Bring it up, pitch forward. One more time, stepping through. And three, press the hips up and contract away. Elbow back. And over, we're gonna just do a last transition, contract, two, three, switch your legs, high release, swing the arms forward into a nice pitch position. Very nice. I like doing that a little bit slower just because you can really start to feel the exact mechanics of what you wanna be feeling in these positions, especially something like a stretch to the side, if we're doing a normal ballet stretch, oftentimes we'll like sink into the side, we won't be lifting up and out. And part of the reason I love the floor section of the gram technique in its relation to ballet is that you're, it, even when you're really stretching and working that flexibility, it's all super dynamic. And so you're actually actively lengthening the muscles eccentrically contracting here, concentrically contracting here, and then when you come up and you do your double pay side or your double pay front, you've built the strength in those specific positions. So you actually, you're not just, you know, hoisting your leg up and then, you know, letting go and hoping for the best. You're moving through and strengthening not just the transitions, but the actual final moments. So, enough of me talking. Oh, uh, this class, somebody just asked how long is this class? It is going to be about another 25 minutes. Um, yes. Okay, so we just did open leg fronts. Now we're going to go soles of the feet together, up, lifted, up through the back, shoulders over hips, Sits bones drilling into the floor. We're gonna contract here just to begin. We're gonna go forward and release and then back to forward and center. 
Now we're going to go forward to the side, and this is one of the places you can start adding a flamant. Back to the side, although it really isn't that much a flamant. You're just taking your straight line, you're spiraling around it, and you're making a slight diagonal. And so that's going to look like you're doing this, but in actuality, your head is still nicely supported from your neck. Okay? So we're going to do that center, left, and right. And then we'll do it slightly faster, center, left, and right. Okay, here we go. Starting in a contracted position. And we're going to go forward for two. And release for two. Contract back over. Two. Back to center for two. Over for two. The first thing that moves is your pelvis. And the rest of it responds. Contract back over. Just a little bit of reverberation through the spine. Now to the right. Two. And hip, spine, shoulders, head, contract back to the center. And back, shoulders over, hips a little bit faster. One. Two. Release. Two. And over. Two. And back. Two. Over. Two. Release. Two. And back. Two. And back. Here we go to the right. One. Two. Hips, waist, shoulders, head contract. Over. And back. Now just follow me here. We're going to go forward. Two. We're going to release through the center. We're going to go straight up, chest to the sky, up and open. Feel your best Iron Man moment. I need to think of a better um, analogy there. But think of a light shining straight up to the sky. Your arms are embracing the sky. <laughs> I know that sounds a little frou-frou, but you don't want your elbows down here. You're really reaching, reaching, reaching. And now we're just going to stretch up and over. Pull on your feet a little bit. Make sure that your lower back is nice and responsive. You're getting your hamstrings. Okay, we good? Let's, uh, let's move on to some turns around the back. So you're going to get on your hip. Um, doesn't matter which one, I'm on my right hip. You're going to take your top leg and fold the, your heel up towards your butt, and you're going to set it down. And then you're going to take this front leg and go into a nice fourth position. If you'll notice at that moment, I just shifted slightly off of my heel. Um, if this is too much for your knee, you can put a yoga block up underneath, and that'll help reduce the stress here. You can do this on a chair, or you can just do exactly what I'm doing, which is on the floor. Front foot is what we call on the walk. We're going to be spiraling up and around, really keeping this nice straight line. Arms are directly out from our sides. We're going to start the turns. And what I really want you to think of is when you're turning, you're not, while I do want this to trail, I don't want the arm to trail. I want the shoulder to trail. So the arms are going to stay along the back. So as I start, so with my hips, then my waist, and then my shoulders, you'll notice as I get perpendicular to the camera, my arm is still directly to the side of me, as is this one. It's not here, it's not here, and this one's not here. This is the thing that I see the most often. So you really want it to be directly like you're holding um, a bar here, except lower so that your shoulders and your arms and your back are all still very connected. Okay? So with that being said, we're going to spiral and hips, waist, shoulders, then the head. Coming back, pull the hip down, waist, shoulders, and head. One more time, waist, shoulders, Head, really challenge yourself and only move 
what I'm saying. Hips, waist, shoulders, now the head. Leave the head here as you pull it. Hips, waist, shoulder, and head. Hips, waist, shoulders, and head. And coming back here we go. We're going to add the other arm. One, two, three, four. Think of cutting the air with the side of your palm. And one more before we add another development. One, two, three, four. Here we go. Same tempo. And two, three, head four, and pitch forward. Not too far. And stretch up, 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 and over. Really feel the hip flexor and contract back around. And we're going to reach into the longest first arabesque you've ever seen. We're going to come back. Four, two, and around, slice the air, and pitch forward for two, coming up for two, and over. First thing that happens is you contract, and then you come around, and reach, reach, square those shoulders off, coming back for two, spiral around, over, and we'll just finish here. Very nice. That'll get your hips nice and warmed up. Whew. Something that uh, helps keep your hips and your shoulders in the right positioning as you're going around is making sure that this knee is staying up. Because as soon as you drop here, that's okay when you're going to pitch forward because you put your knee down and you know the weight of your thigh and your calf are suddenly all going that way and so that's going to actually help you stabilize when you know you start lifting this back leg up but for all of the other turns you want to feel it coming almost up and around towards this shoulder so there's this beautiful uh opposition you're going to get this nice inner thigh workout right in that the little brevis that really tiny um, inner thigh muscle, and that's going to help so much with stabilization. So maybe think about that a little bit. So when you're spiraling, you're not just going that way, because then there's no opposition, there's no eccentric control, it is all just letting your joints do it. Okay? Let's go to the other side, and on our hips, get into a nice fourth position, spiral up and over towards your back shoulder, and we're going to go nice and slow, hip waist, shoulders, and head, and hip, waist, shoulders, and head. Really think about what I said about the arms, shoulders, and head, and hip, waist, shoulders, and head. With one arm, hip, waist, shoulders, head, hips, waist shoulders, head. It's not going to look like I'm really moving for the first two counts because you don't want to anticipate the spiral. And shoulders, head, other arm, one, two, cut the air, head's last, leave your head and your shoulders, waist, shoulders, head, one more time. Just simple with the arms around and pull the hip back down, shoulders and head. Now with the pitch development, three, head four and over for two. Pressing up, scoop and lift, lift over. Now contract, wrap around. And we're going to reach, 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 reach. And this isn't like a normal first arabesque for ballet. This is 
really open. You want this shoulder behind this shoulder. And we're gonna come back. And two, around three, and four, pitch forward. For two, scoop up, lift, 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 over, contract around. And reach, reach, keep reaching, keep reaching, come back to the beginning, and up, around and over to finish. Woo, I'm sweating. So what really is gonna help there is um, making sure your butt is engaging as you're going through. I know it sounds kind of counterintuitive, but the more of the littler muscles that you use in these kind of dynamic flexibility movements, trying to find more freedom, more mobility, that's building up those muscles is gonna make you more flexible, not less. There's this whole thing about strength equaling less flexible, and that's not real. Okay, um, so just because we were doing a lot of, well, I was about to say butt stuff. I guess I said it anyway. Here we go. We have 128. Great, we are gonna do something I don't think I've done it on uh, Zarelli Live yet. So we're gonna jump way ahead and do a combination that's called um, exercise on six. It's a series of six twos. It's very simple. We're gonna start with our knees about hip distance apart. If you need to turn out just a little bit, that's okay. I don't want you, you know, being so rigid with your placement that you end up hurting yourself. So knees are about hip with hip distance apart, toes are pointed up, and we're gonna come over to a flat back, really making sure it's an actual flat back. You're gonna be coming a lot more forward than you think you should. You can either, if this is your first time doing this, you can have your, uh, the palms of your hands directly under your shoulders, or what I'm gonna do is I have my hands resting on my heels. Again, this isn't, I'm not gripping, this is more just of an assistance to keep my shoulders down. That's one thing, if you're gonna put your palms here, make sure your shoulders aren't coming forward and up towards your ears. They really want to be down and in your back. Okay, so the first, the first two of the six is contract. For two, we're gonna go back staying contracted. We're gonna thrust the hips through into a release, and then we're gonna contract back down. Then release through the spine, back to the start, contract, release. So that's one, two, go back, two, two, hips three, two, Contract four, two, hips five, two, contract six, two. Okay, I'm gonna talk through this again one more time. Usually when I'm teaching class, I don't do my first contraction back quite so far, mostly because I'm afraid that people will try to go back that far and hurt their knees. Usually, I just try to get my shoulders over my hips. So, first contraction. Shoulders are away from the ears. My neck softens just slightly because my spine is curving. Now, when I come back, it's okay to stop here. That's totally fine. What I do want you to be aware of is that you're actively engaging your quads. You're not sinking down like this because that's when bad things are gonna happen. So, if you're here, you're not, I'm not putting any weight in my hands. I'm actively holding here. If you need a little bit of support, you can put some in your hands. But if you have to give yourself support with your hands, I would recommend not going as far back as I was going, okay? Now when we go up 
and through. It's just like the rest of uh, the grand technique where a lot of the uh, movements are initiated from the pelvis. So our whole body is in a nice contraction here. And the first thing that's gonna happen is our pelvis, we're gonna release forward and up, and it's gonna reverberate all the way up through the spine. We're not dropping the neck. It's still nice and lifted. We're opening our chest. We're not trying to crunch anything down. We're really trying to keep everything as aligned and lengthened as possible. Now this next bit, in my opinion, is one of the hardest parts of the exercise on six, and that is starting the contraction without moving your upper body first. So I, when I think of that uh, next position, I automatically want to go head, chest, then shoulders. That's not what you want to do. You want to be from here, really engage your abs and pull away and then your shoulders are going to come forward or your upper back is going to come forward, all right? I know I'm doing a lot of explaining today. <sighs> so then we're down here. That's four, two. And then five, two is again, starts in the pelvis, reverberates up through the back and the head. Five, two, and we're just gonna do a nice contraction and release for the six, two. Okay, excellent. Um, we are, let's try this again. We'll do it twice through. If you wanna do more than that, good on you. That's, uh, my quads are already quite tired, so. Nice flat back. You don't have to be forward in order to get like a nice flat back. I have to be, my butt is almost directly over my heels. That is okay. It's all gonna depend on your personal um, proportions. There we go. Point your feet. And here we go. Contract for two. Going back for two, keep it all engaged, three, two, contract away, two, and through the back, contract, release, one more time, and one, two, and back, two, hips forward, open the chest, contract, Squeeze your butt and release the pelvis through the back. Contract, release. Ooh, I almost fell over there. How are y'all doing? I'm seeing thumbs up and hearts and some familiar, some familiar names. Hi, Walter. I miss, I miss class with all of you guys. Hopefully you'll be next week. Um, great. I think today we're just gonna finish up with um, my favorite uh, shin busters to keep it, keep your um, ankles and shins all healthy while jumping on non-sprung floors. So just follow along and we're gonna bring our right ankle up and we're gonna rotate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, reverse, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Really articulate all of the metatarsals and toes. Reverse, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's a dog barking in the apartment above us. And flex, two, three, four, and point. Really push, push, Push through the heel and scoop, scoop, scoop with the toes. One more time and point. Eight counts, transition. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Flex, turn out, point, turn in. 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 Reverse, flex in, point, out, flex, in, 
point. Really keep your abs engaged because you want to keep your turn out when you're doing a devil pay. Front, keep going, keep going, almost there. And, oh, very nice. You did it. Yes, make sure that when your leg is up like this, you're still engaging your abs because especially when you're in a turnout position, as soon as you go up, you want to be able to hold that. That's the whole reason we're working on that. Okay? So, other foot. Let's keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Reverse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, reverse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Flex up and point. Two, three, four. Flex up. Point bend. Two, three, four. And flex. Press it up and point. Scoop it down one more. I think that was four, but I'm not sure. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and flex. Turn out, point, turn in. Flex, turn out, point, turn in. Really feel your abs. Just poke them a little bit. Make sure they're activated. Reverse. Flex in, point out. Flex in, point. Oh, this one's burning. <laughs> point, one more. And keep trying to use that full range of motion. Five, six, seven, eight. Ugh. Okay. Whew. Wonderful. Well, it was nice to be back on Zarelli um, teaching this class. Uh, this is about 40 minutes, so. Um, just wanted to get into a little bit more of the details of specific parts of the gram, te gram technique, helping with um, vis visualization and talking through things, especially right now when you're not taking class from me directly. I can't show you and like pull and, you know, physically put you in the right position. So um, I love that I have the opportunity to kind of break things down over here. But thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it, um, and I will be back on Worldwide Ballet class next week. We're in the process of moving, so there's a lot of, uh, oh, that doesn't look like I'm moving, but you know, <laughs> it's been a little bit crazy, but mwah, lots of kisses, and I'll see you guys soon.